So we start off with some newscasts. Let's uh, see what the newscasts talk about. Very similar to like um, Starship Troopers, but these are new casts in dystopian RoboCop. Let's watch. Three dead police officers, one critically injured. Police union leaders blame Omni Consumer Products, OCP, the firm which recently entered into a contract with the city to fund and run the Detroit Metropolitan Police Department. So this Department. is crazy Dick to Jones, me. Division. The police is being run and taken over by a corporate entity? This is wild. Like, the police is supposed to be government-run, no-profit motive for the public mm -hmm. good. Now, not just police, but the entire justice department of the, of the nation. We want to have justice separated from financial corporate interests. That's right, because profit motive is a total conflict of interest with justice that keeps society together. To merge mm -hmm. the two? That is wild. Yeah, you could really mess. You could really have messed up situations where there are conflicting incentives. For like, if you wanted to get people into jail, but then if you somehow made money by keeping them in there, then how would you ever get them out? How would you ever have them have reasonable terms? That's right. And if a corporation is con is doing crime, but they also run the police and the justice department, they have an incentive not to enforce the laws on themselves. Right. Who checks them? I mean, nobody dystopian society, science fiction stuff. That's, that's what we're here for, science fiction. Yeah, yeah. Vision President OCP. Every policeman knows when he joins the force that there are certain inherent risks that come with the territory. Ask any cop, he'll tell you. If you can't stand the heat, you better stay out of the kitchen. Although seriously wounded, Officer Frank Fredrickson escaped and identified this man, Clarence Bodiker. Wait, 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 wait. So this guy whose name is Dick, he says, Dick. if you can't stand the heat, get out of the fire. And he's talking about the policeman. So like if you, isn't that messed up? He's basically saying that cops shouldn't be cops if you can't risk being killed every day. That's right. And he's, he's sort of saying cops can be mistreated because, hey, you signed on the dotted line. You knew what you were signing up for. If you die, you die. Hey. You shouldn't have signed up for it. Yeah. You shouldn't have signed up for it. What are you doing? Like we don't need to, we're not responsible for your job. We can put you in line of fire all day long. Gosh, that's why corporations should be separate from legal, from like lawful entities mm -hmm. because his incentive is to not care about the police. His incentive is to make money. That's right. His incentive is to make money. So the lives of the police officers are kind of not important for that. Ooh, not good. That's not good and, for society. And just spouting off these like sayings if you can't handle the heat, stay out of the kitchen as cover for his profiteering. Whew, brutal. <laughs> Ethics be damned as long as I got a good quip. <laughs> Fredrickson escaped and identified this man, Clarence Bodiker, unofficial ah, crime boss of old Detroit, now sought in connection with the deaths of 31 police officers. Today he's at large, while doctors at Henry Ford Memorial Hospital fight to save the life of Officer Frank Fredrickson. Good luck, Frank. Good luck, Frank. <laughs> yeah, it does feel like propaganda, doesn't it? Where it's like, mm. this guy has been, this is a crime boss. He's bad. This cop, he's in hurting. He's good. But actually, the situation is very complicated. And we're just getting a very simple understanding of what the events are. But once you dig in, you dig in through the movie, they'll tell us what, how it goes down. It's actually mm. super messy. Super messy.